So I wanted to do a quick video showing you guys how to use cabs in the HX family to get good sounds um, instead of IRs. I think a lot of times IRs are very useful for plug and play. A lot of them sound very good, whether they're paid or free. Um, you can find some very good ones. But if you spend enough time with the stock cabs, I think you can get an equally good sound. So I'm going to show you some of the parameters I use and how I get a pretty good sound just using stock cabs. So let's start with a regular a30 font, it's an AC30 model, um, it's a Vox, got kind of a British chime, so we're just going to put a cab block, uh, two blocks next to it, we're going to put, eventually we're going to put a little spring reverb right there, but for now, we're just going to use the cab, and immediately we're going to go to the dual cab, alright, and then our left side is going to be the bluebell, and we're going to bring that one down to the bluebell as well, and so right now they're identical. The way I'm going to think about it is I'm going to use this one as my primary cab tone, and then this one is going to be kind of supplementary, because um, right now I'm running mono, and so there being some to mono anyway. Um, and you could do it, if you're running stereo, you could have them different and kind of blend them that way, but for this, the easiest way to do it, I think, is just to have them separate and then use this one as a supplementary tone. So let's start here. We're going to bring this level all the way down, so you're not going to really hear that at all as, we, as we're shaping this tone. Bring that up a little bit. Cool. Um, we're going to bring the mic. I like the 409. The 409 and the 57 are pretty common. It's probably what you would end up using if you were playing at a venue and they mic'd up a regular old cab. Almost everyone has a 57, so it's a pretty safe bet to get a good sound from a 57. 409 is not terribly different from the 57. I like the characteristics a little bit better because there's not as much of that high-end, like, fizzy sound that you would get from a 57. So, we're going to stick with that for our primary tone. And then distance is how far the microphone is away from the cab grill. So, as you bring it back, you're going to get less of an in-your-face sound. It's going to have um, less bass a little more uh, mids will will come through just because it's most of what you're picking up and then you'll pick up um, some what would be room sounds reflections um, of that so I'm gonna bring that up here's all the way up I'm gonna bring it back down and you'll kind of hear the bass come in as I'm bringing it down. Listen to this. Kind of land lifeless. You can hear some low end come back in. That's kind of muddy. So let's get about two and a half, three inches away. It's a pretty safe bet for our primary tone. And then the low cuts. Bring it back up. Low cuts, um, so before 2.9, they had them just off all the time. Um, and you... It, I didn't like that so much because that's not how a real cab works. Um, especially high cuts. It, it also had no high cuts, and you would get this digital fizz, potentially. But if you bring it down and cut that off, just like a real cab actually does, a real cab doesn't output those frequencies. Um, so I like to bring it down to like 6K. It sounds a little darker, but that's how it fits well in a mix. Again, that's not the end tone. We're going to supplement with another mic and different sounds after this in just a second. Um, early reflections. Imagine this as someone took a different mic, set it up somewhere else in the room, and this is catching those sounds. It gives a lot of different life to the cab sounds. Sounds a little more real to me. And not real as in I'm standing in front of a cabinet and air is being pushed at me. This is like I've recorded something, listening to it in a studio. Um, that's what I mean by it. So that's cool. Let's bring that to 40. Let's have just a nice regular tone. That. that sounds a little bit like an AC30 to me. Let's go to my bridge pickup.
Now we're going to use our other side to supplement that. So we're going to use a thick ribbon mic. Um, let's bring it up. You know what we're actually going to do? We're going to bring this side back down. So all we're going to hear is the ribbon mic. We'll get it's going to sound probably pretty bad at first, but then once we get the other one and we blend this one in, it's going to be good. Yeah, that's what we want. We don't want much of that high information. Um, we want a lot of distance on this one. And we'll bring in the early reflections. And again, this is just to sweeten up the other ones. So some of the stuff that that one was missing was like some of the low end, some of my body. So that's good. We'll leave that there. We're going to bring this one up back to Unity. Is that where we want it? And then this one we're going to bring down. It's a little too much. some of that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And again, these are some demano already because I don't have anything. Um, I just have one output plugged in. But if you want to sum it yourself, you can add a mono block after it. difference you hear obviously is the compressor doing its job it's still mono um, if it were a stereo preset you would hear it sum to mono right there um, I'll just leave that there and then we're gonna add a little spring reverb to emulate what we have going on in some real amps we'll do a really low really quick decay and a low mix <laughs> Clipping a little bit, bring that down. Bring our mix just up a little bit. Let's keep the decay around one. Quick. AC30 sound, and we didn't even mess with our amp parameters. We totally could go in there and get a real nice, clean sound. We could set up some snapshots to get a crunch or a lead sound. You could put those on a foot switch. Um, but for this video, um, the most important thing is using the dual cab block and then blending that second one if, as you're um, summing it to mono. Um, really gives you some cool options as opposed to just using a single cab block and you're stuck with one mic um, and no blending options. I think that's a lot of times why an IR could be some of the stock cabs if you're just using one at a time. A lot of those IRs have two different mics on the same cab or you know a room mic blended in or something like that and they're really cool. They sound really good. They're just plug and play. You can't mess with those parameters in here on the stock cabs. You can actually do that. Um, so I tend to prefer these. I like to sit down, take my time and mess with them. Anyway, I hope this helped some of you guys understanding some of the parameters and how to get good sounds on your own. Thanks for watching.